Our final presentation then this morning is Mr. Patrick McAvoy. Pat is a postgraduate student in the Department of Creative and Performing Arts, and his project is entitled The Plays of Jim Nolan, A Study. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Pat McAvoy. Today is National Honesty Day, so I'm going to acknowledge that I'm a post-mature student in the Department of Creative and Performing Arts. My, when I tell people that I'm writing a research master's on the plays of Jim Nolan, the first question I'm invariably asked is, is he dead? <laughs> well, no, he's not dead. Um, this is Jim Nolan, and I'm glad to say he's very much alive and well, and so is he. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about Nolan's work, his Walford voice, his contribution to Irish theatre. There is a significant body of work here that has largely be, remained unexamined by theatre academics. What my research is doing is identifying and addressing this gap by asking the central research question, what contribution has Jim Nolan made as a playwright to Irish contemporary theatre? In terms of output, this man has a mightily impressive CV. He's a member of Ace Donna. He has written 15 plays, five of which have been published, three major radio documentaries. His work has been performed internationally. He has received awards. He's been writer in residence with more than half a dozen theatre companies, including the Abbey. So how come, how come no one has written about this significant body of work, apart from an excellent dissert dissertation, minor dissertation by Michael Dunbar on the single theme of redemption? Well, this research would argue that this is part of the general neglect of regional theatre by academics, an issue that is currently being addressed by our own School of Humanities into their archival research into Red Kettle Theatre Company. What I propose to do is to critically analyse Nolan's work over the last 30 years and so address this gap in scholarship. The methodological approach is qualitative, flexible design, textual analysis, the literary critical approach is structuralist with a phenomenological perspective. I'm also using reader reception and uh, response theory because it takes into account a crucial element of theatrical performance, the collaborative creation of meaning by people other than the author. Currently, the research is concentrating on Nolan's early work, in particular, a trilogy of plays with interlinking themes that are inspired by people in, and events in Watford, although there is not a single mention of a blah in one of them. Surely a serious literary omission. However, what Nolan does mention and create are characters with a Watford voice that provides significant and profound insight into social and cultural issues in Watford from 1956 to the present day. Nolan addresses what Professor Christopher Murray identifies as the central question of Irish drama, where we were, where we are, and where are we headed. Nolan is not asking what happened, but why it happened. The first play in the trilogy is based on the true story of the death by drowning of a young man, a suicidal de death by drowning of a young man in a quarry hole in Grana across the river in 1966. However, Nolan imaginatively recreates this young man as Billy Cass, a 20-year-old casual docker, subjected to a daily hiring fair on the Waterford docks that was based on familial cronyism and organised by a closed nexus of docker families. Billy rails against the injustice of this and of other issues, such as the poor children's outing, where 2,000 children were marched behind a brass band, the city fathers in their robes, the priests in their vestments, um, in an act that married popular charity with private humiliation. Billy Cass asks why. His second play, The Gods Are Angry, Miss Kerr, is set in the uh, Waterford Jute Factory. The Miss Kerr of the title was a rather forbidding manageress of a local coliseum cinema, a woman who bore an extraordinary resemblance to Popeye's girlfriend, uh, Olive Oil. It was a cinema to where the, JD, uh, the character J.D. Mack goes, spends her every free hour. Again, Nolan creates characters whose interaction with their world allows them to articulate significant social and cultural comment. I'll just take one example. When Janie finds out that her attendance at the local Coliseum cinema is prohibited by Father Cody's edict that all places of public entertainment must close for the Ballybricken procession, Janie decides to pen a letter of objection to the Pope 
beginning as intimates do with, Dear Pius, <laughs> you don't know me, but... Now, Janie vents her frustration with a church that demanded public acts of unconditional obedience from its flock. Significantly, while her, her friends laugh at her comments, no one disagrees with her fundamental objection to the church exercising authority over individual freedom. His third play in the Watford trilogy was inspired by the decision to demolish this old, iconic and beautiful Watford boathouse. Here, four young students on their last day at Leaving Cert come together to discuss their ineluctable futures, the impossibility of escaping from a world into which they were born, the inevitability of replicating their parents' experience of a life of low-skilled manual employment on small wages. A human need to create a mechanism of coping is what is frequently, in what is frequently a hostile and unjust world, is the energising force behind Nolan's work. Michael Dunbar's earlier thesis, while acknowledging the role of, um, of theatre as a redemptive force, asserts that Nolan is fundamentally a Christian playwright. However, my research would suggest that Nolan is not a Christian playwright, but that his, his concept of redemption is based on the existential self, where the creative act forms a metaphysical bridge to healing, curing, understanding and redemption. Um, Billy, Cass in the, uh, Billy Cass in the Black Pool dreams a dream of the water cranes in revolt against their masters. The liar O'Brien in The Gods Are Angry imagines that we are a race of sea giants from which we claim dignity and, um, and uh, nobleness. Finally, Claire perceives a public performance of Bab's Bohemian Girl from her beloved boathouse and that, that will transform all who witness it. However, in the early plays, Nolan's theatre of transformation does not occur. Billy Cass drowns himself in the Black Pool, Albert C. Giants return to the sea, Claire's boathouse is demolished. The research in the early work points to a failure in redemption because the acts of meta-theatre, the play within the play, simply do not happen. Waterford characters and events continue to form the background to Nolan's narratives. The Guernica Hotel is based on Peter O'Connor from Paulbury standing left, who fought for the International Brigade against fascism in the Spanish Civil War. This photograph was taken a week before the Battle of Jemiah, in which Johnny Hunt standing right was killed. In the play, the ageing O'Connor character struggles with his attempts to keep idealism alive in this now Celtic tiger world that grants neither value nor space to such lofty thoughts. The play Blackwater Angel, commissioned by the Abbey Theatre, where it was premiered in 2001, when Nolan was writer in residence there, was based on this man, Valentine Greatrakes, who was a faith healer in the parish of a fan in Cromwellian times, 1667. The struggle with the loss of his gift of faith healing is the conflict of the play. Nolan's most recent play, Brighton, is based on this man, Waterford-born John act, uh, actor John Rogan, who had a very successful 40-year career in the West End, but in 2008 fell down um, an escalator in Hammersmith's tube station and broke his back. The play concentrates on the crisis of identity of a wheelchair-bound actor who can only dream, as he says himself, of a remake of Ironside. What have all these people got in common? They all seek healing, curing, caring and redemption. And they will all find it in the theatre of transformation where creative characters find epiphany moments of understanding, meaning. The next stage of the research journey. Jim Nolan is a Waterford playwright who writes with a Waterford voice on issues that arise from the Waterford context but are not necessarily unique to it. In so doing, he gives us a perspective on the social and cultural life of Waterford since 1956 to the present day. This is an interesting and a significant contribution to contemporary Irish drama. In terms of my own research, tune in next year for Nolan II, the sequel. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the panel? Colette? 
Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. How are you planning to contextualise Nolan's work within Irish or international drama? Well, one of the things I'm doing is I'm examining the, the writings of other writers and finding intertextual connections. Now, I didn't elaborate it on, on it there because we could be here all day, but connections exist. I would be very, I would love to write a single chapter, if, if it's allowed, on the salvage shop, which connects with Brian Field's Faith Healer, Thomas Murphy's Geely concert. There's also connections too with Sebastian Barry and with Billy Roach from Wexford. Okay, any other questions? Connor? Well, you've convinced me that Jim Nolan's a Waterford voice, but how would you convince, in general, the, the arts world that he's also an Irish voice? Well, all, all work has to begin somewhere, you know, and when you think of a lot of uh, regional writers, such as Marina Carr, Billy Roach, Jim Nolan, and so on, Brian Friel began in Derry. Every time, you, every time I look at a list of databases in search of somebody writing about Jim Nolan, I find an exhaustive list of uh, Brian Friel. But all writers begin somewhere. The, uh, the local voice is not necessarily confined to a local area. These are all issues that arise in the national context. Any final questions? Are yes. Are you going to compare to international playwrights and theatre traditions? Um, not at the moment. The one point I would make is that the neglect of regional theatre is not something that's limited only to Irish theatre, but is a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, if you're not a success in Canada, if your plays are not produced in Montreal. We have one final question at the very back, Martha. Sorry. Sean. <laughs> running. <laughs> Fault you. He is. In, uh, he has just completed one called Dreamland, which is based um, around the decision to create um, a theme park in the 1930s out in Bon Mahan. Um, it's a very, very interesting play because it seems to, it gathers together a lot of civil war and war of independence conflicts. So that play is intended for production next year. Okay. Which I just shouldn't have said, actually. No, look. <laughs> Please disregard that last remark. <laughs> okay, thanks a million, Pat. Thank you. Thank you.